In this lesson, you will learn how to model the relationships between the nodes in your graph. Relationships connect the entities in your application. These connections are the verbs in your use cases. Let's look at a few example use cases. What ingredients are used in a recipe? Who is married to this person? Using connections as verbs is a fine shorthand to get started, but there are other important considerations that you will learn about later in this course. In this first use case, we choose the uses relationship. In the second use case, we could choose married or married to. We choose married. Choosing good names or types for the relationships in the graph is important. Relationship types need to be something that is intuitive to stakeholders and developers alike. Relationship types cannot be confused with an entity name. When you create a relationship in Neo4j, a direction must either be specified explicitly or inferred by the left to right direction in the pattern specified. At runtime, during a query, direction is typically not required. So here, the uses relationship must be created to go from a recipe node to an ingredient node. The married relationship could be created to start in either node since this type of relationship is symmetric. Now let's learn about fan out. Here we have entities, person or residence, represented not as a single node, but as a network or linked nodes. This is an extreme example of fan out and is almost certainly overkill for any real life situation. But some amount of fan out can be very useful. For example, splitting last names onto separate nodes helps answer the question, who has the last name Scott? Similarly, having cities as separate nodes assists with the question, who lives in the same city as Patrick Scott? The main risk about fanout is that it can lead to very dense nodes or supernodes. These are nodes that have hundreds of thousands of incoming or outgoing relationships. Supernodes need to be handled carefully. Now let's focus on defining relationships in the movie graph. Recall these initial use cases, what people acted in a movie, what person directed a movie, what movies did a person act in. For the first use case, we define the acted in relationship that will go from a person node to a movie node. For the second use case, we define the directed relationship that will go from a person node to a movie node. And for this last use case, we use the acted in relationship again. So here is our data model where we specify the type and direction of the relationships between nodes. And here's the instance model for these relationships using the nodes we have created thus far in the graph. Tom Hanks acted in two movies. Meg Ryan and Jack Nicholson each acted in one movie. Danny DeVito both acted in and directed the same movie. Exploring relationships with this instance model, we see that the movie Apollo 13 has a single actor in the graph, but the other two movies have two actors each. Properties for a relationship are used to enrich how two nodes are related. When you define a property for a relationship, it is because your use cases ask a specific question about how two nodes are related, not just that they are related. For example, we saw in the Neo4j Fundamentals course that properties can be added to a relationship to further describe it. Here we see that we have a date property on the married relationship to further describe the relationship between Michael and Sarah. Additionally, we have a roles property on the works at relationship to describe the roles that Michael has or had when he worked at Graph Inc. These properties are specific to the relationship between two nodes. Just like you analyze the use cases for naming labels, relationship types, and node properties, you can use the use cases to come up with properties for relationships. Here is a use case. What role did a person play in a movie? 
Here are the runtime operations that we use for this use case. We know that the role for a particular acted in relationship will be necessary for the use case. So we add the role property to the relationship. So here is the data model. And here is the instance model you will be creating in the next challenge. Notice the role property is different for each acted in relationship. Then in the challenges that follow, you will define a new relationship for the graph and add it to the instance model. This completes our look at how to model the relationships between nodes in your graph.